Thank you for the invitation to come. We've got a lot of things to cover today, uh, a fair amount of detail. Uh, it's going to be focused completely on economics. And my perspective uh, mainly is a, is a large dairy perspective, and you were introduced as, as larger dairies in this area. And large to me is always a, a relative term. Uh, my largest client in the western U.S. milks 30,000 cows. Um, but if I come to the east coast of the U.S., a thousand cow dairy is very, very large. So large is a relative thing, but large or size doesn't really mean much when you look at a P&L in a dairy. We're really looking at things on a per liter basis, so it really doesn't matter how big you are. I don't care whether your cows eat grass or if they're in a TMR or if they're in a free stall or they're housed outside. When you line up P&Ls on a dairy looking at it per liter, I think you can really compare apples with apples and see which business is most efficient, which business is making money. Because after all, the purpose of having a dairy is to make money, and uh, that should be the bottom line measurement. So my business historically has been uh, GNR Dairy Consulting. Uh, the G is for Greg, the R is my, for my wife, Rachel. And uh, we've been consulting with dairies all over the world for 15 years. Um, just recently, I've accepted a role as a CFO for a dairy in Wisconsin. So my wife and I are going to be moving to Wisconsin. Has anybody ever been to Wisconsin? What time of year did you go? Hopefully not January or February. <laughs> it's our, our winter time in Wisconsin is extremely cold. Uh, so I've got a picture from last winter. It was, it was a very cold winter when the, the dairy I'm going to has a sign out front with a digital thermometer and it was minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. So Celsius was like, I don't know what, minus 35, something like that. That's cold. So uh, we're going to uh, get used to a new style of dairying, but we believe in this so much. We believe in the dairy industry so much that, that we're investing our capital in the dairy as well. So we'll be partners and I'll serve as a CFO. Um, the two dairies that I'll be working with uh, together milk about 9,000 cows and they farm uh, eight or 9,000 acres. And so we think there's an opportunity to grow those dairies. So again, uh, what I practiced uh, for a long time or preached for a long time, you might say that I'm going to hopefully put into action and I'm really looking forward to, to moving from the consulting end more to the production end and uh, put my capital where I think it'll get a better return. So uh, this is uh, where I live is uh, right now is in Virginia and where I'm moving to is gonna be right up here, right near Green Bay, Wisconsin in the far, far, far north of the US. Where I've worked uh, over my, most of my career has been in this High Plains region. That's been a really a growing dairy region and uh, that's, I was fortunate to get trained by some really good dairymen I had some clients that were exceptionally good business people, and early on in my career, they pushed to me that this dairy is a business, and it must survive as a business unto itself, otherwise we don't want it. Because all these dairymen in that part of the world were not originally dairymen, they were farmers. And I differentiate a farmer from a dairyman. In our country, if you call a dairyman a farmer, you're kind of insulting them a little bit, because it's two different skill sets. So a farmer is somebody that grows crops, and a dairyman is somebody that milks cows. Some dairymen are also farmers, but they're normally dairymen first. And so my clients were all farmers first, and they decided at some point, well, why don't we turn some of this feed into milk and market this as milk? But they always kept in mind that if this dairy wasn't a profitable, good business, they would sell it in a minute and go back to being farmers and no longer provide feed for the dairy. So we've always kept them separate. The dairy always had to stand on its own. And when we get through looking at feed costs on a dairy here in a few minutes, you'll see where that becomes important. And that mindset for me has been important for a long time. So this is one of the dairies I'll be going to. This is an older picture in 2009. This is Wisconsin in the summertime. If anybody ever wants to come visit Wisconsin, you're welcome to come. I'd love to have visitors, but uh, I'd advise coming in, this, in our summertime, not in the wintertime. So uh, this is uh, uh, typical of the dairies that I've worked with. This is a uh, free stall barn. Uh, um, confinement housing, and that's more of the systems I'm used to. So I don't know your system very well in Australia. I do have one client in the U.S. that's an organic client, and so they graze a lot, and they milk about 20,000 cows organically, and so they've got an extensive grazing operation. So that's probably about the only experience I have with grazing on a small level. So I don't know your dairies that well, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you today how you should run your business, how you should manage your business. Hopefully what I'm going to do is talk about some financial basics that you can apply to your business. I'd like to motivate you by the time you leave here today to understand more about your dairy financially, to go home and put together a P&L if you don't have one, maybe understand your P&L a little bit better. All right, this is uh, one of my uh, clients in Kansas that I've had for a long time. 
This is a dairy that um, I learned a lot about dairy financial statements on. That Originally, this dairy was these two freestall barns. They milked about 2,000 cows, 3X, and could never make any money. This went on for year after year after year, and finally about 2007 or so, somewhere around there, they added these extra pens and added a heifer facility and grew the business. And today that dairy milks 4,500 cows. I'll show you a P&L from this dairy a little bit later to give you an idea what our cost structure looks like in comparison to yours. But uh, making that change of getting more marginal cows in this dairy made all the difference in the world. If this dairy had stayed at 2,000 cows in that market, they wouldn't have been able to survive. But with all those changes within the business, we diluted the fixed costs over more cows, and that worked. You know, again, other parts of the country can't get this big, but again, this is a very different model from yours. But think of this as business. Think of this as cost per liter. Think about what's the most efficient model for you uh, um, in your market here, okay? So here's another one of my clients, the same type of thing. And just think about all the open land around these dairies. This is why I was so fortunate to get to start my consulting career with dairies like this. The limitations in these, in these areas, and this is in the plains of Kansas, is just your imagination and your ability to get capital because there's open land everywhere. Between these dairies, there's 50, 60, 70 miles between dairies. So there's just wide open, there's all kinds of space, all kinds of opportunity, all kinds of creative things that people do. And I've been fortunate to learn a lot there. But at the end of the day, we milk cows just like everybody else. Our cows are no different than yours. Our genetics are similar, our cows are the same. And the view of a dairy is behind the back end of a cow. This is how I typically see a dairy walking pens. We've got the same problems as everybody else, the same challenges to try to make money. The one difference is our markets uh, um, react quickly and monthly. We have no ability to contract milk prices in the future like some of you are able to. And so um, talking to lenders here the last week, a couple I've talked to, they uh, think the risk proposition we have in our country for dairy makes them very nervous because we will have a very low equity <coughs> dairy without any price guarantees whatsoever, much more than two or three months down the road, if even that.